Now that we're inside the Parish Church of St Mary of Charity, I hope you noticed the welcome board as you came in. It does mean that, welcome. And on it are printed the locations of nine other boards similar to this one that you can see around the church. And they're there to guide you around the church so that after this little taster today, you can come back and at your leisure, you can explore this wonderful church, the largest parish church in the county of Kent. We're now going to show you two items of the many that are in here. Please follow me. We are now stood in the north transept, which together with the central crossing and the south transept is big enough to hold about 75% of the parish churches in Kent, one at a time of course. But it is here that we have what I refer to as our miracle. The reason it is a miracle is because it's the painted column. And at, before the Reformation, the whole church, the walls, would have been decorated. But at the Reformation, it was decided that they were imagery and they should be removed. And what happened was that they were whitewashed over. The whitewash containing lime would have eaten through the paint and they would have disappeared. Come the Victorian times, when these gas lamps appeared, the congregation noticed that centuries of tallow and candle had made the place filthy. So they set about cleaning. And they set about cleaning with vim and vigour, or ajax and wire wool. Any residue underneath the whitewash and the tallow and the candle would have disappeared. The fact that this remains is therefore a miracle. And it is nine columns or nine panels depicting the life of Jesus and his mother Mary. As I say, it is a miracle, and people come from all over the world to see it. We have other wonderful things in this church, and in just a moment we're going to move across to the Trinity Chapel, and I will show you something over there. We're now in the Trinity Chapel, which, as you can see, is also our war memorial. But the reason for bringing you here is so that I can finish telling the story of Faversham Abbey, and which was founded by King Stephen for the burial place for himself, his wife Matilda and his son Eustace. At the Reformation, the Abbey passed into the hands of the Crown and, like most buildings, it was disposed of. This building could not be disposed of to anyone in the land because it was too big. Anybody that had it would have been placed above the rest and Henry wanted to keep all of the nobles at the same level as his father had done at the end of the War of the Roses. Faversham Abbey therefore was dismantled block by block, the blocks floated down the creek over the channel and used to reinforce the defences of Calais which was the last part of France that England still owned at that time. But what happened to Stephen, Matilda and Eustace? Popular legend says that the soldiers melted down the sarcophagus and made a thousand musket balls out of the lead casing and threw the bones into Faversham Creek. The legend goes on that the people of Faversham, horrified, dived into the creek, fished out the bones, brought them back up to the parish church here and had them reinterred here. Possible, not really plausible, Far more likely is the tale that the abbot and his monks, having left the abbey, came to worship here at the parish church. They did worship here, we've seen it on the records. When the Masons came to demolish the abbey, it is far more likely that the abbot, the monks and the parish priest collaborated and the body was moved over here to a safe place. We have a safe place here. We're not going to disinter them to prove it. We do not need to. We believe that we have the remains of King Stephen here, which makes us the only parish church in the country to have the remains of an English sovereign. Now this is the end of our walk today. I do hope you've enjoyed yourselves.